right, here we are today, Thunderhead 289 Garage. Um, we're finishing off our little uh, crate short block engine here today. And in this video, we're gonna go through the water pump and the timing cover, how to get that all installed properly so you don't have any leaks or issues when you go to fire up your engine for the first time. Um, a little bit of briefing on this engine in particular. Uh, the original intent of it was to find a combination of parts and pieces that we could throw together, order everything in and throw it together in a weekend. But um, uh, I guess I wasn't sure what I was going to put it in, but with the death of the old Fox body, we don't have the sandbag on it anymore. I think I've opted to throw it in the old 65 Galaxy and put it back on the road. It's been about four or five years, so um, it's due time. And that, that's a pretty fun car with a five speed and 411 nine inch. And, um, way too good of a car to be sitting around at least at least way too fun to drive so we're, we're getting her finished off today and I guess we'll just jump right in but if you want to see the other videos um, I'll link them below of uh, how to degree your camshaft I got a pretty good video on that valve train push rod and um, there's a lot of good stuff that we went through on this engine but anyway I won't waste too much of your time we're gonna jump right in here and get ripping through this thing all right so jumping in here today before I begin I just want to make mention that um, a key feature to the overall success of a timing cover and water pump installation is that you go ahead and mock everything up before your final assembly. You want to make sure that you have all your parts and pieces, all your bolts are the right length because this Ford timing cover and water pump situation gets pretty hairy and as you go through the years um, there are a lot of differences. So you want to make sure everything bolts up correctly, all your gaskets are the proper gaskets. There's a lot of gaskets that fit but um, they have different sealing services. So you, again, you just want to take the time to go ahead and mock this all up because once, especially on a fresh engine, once you go ahead and install this into a vehicle and with the oil pan on, if you have to take this all apart again, it's, it's a pretty big pain. And it's a pretty big demerit in my opinion against the small block Ford. But um, as long as when you move forward, you go ahead and mock everything up so you have all your bolt links right um, and everything before we go ahead and, and finalize the installation then then you'll be okay. And um, a big reason I say that is I like to coat all of my gaskets on the timing cover and water pump with um, black RTV. Reason being, and this block is pretty clean, but a lot, uh, but a lot of them have a lot of anomalies, uh, corrosion, the old timing cover will especially be corroded. And that black R RTV really helps to account for any of the um, irregularities and anomalies that you might come into contact with there. And um, finally, the last piece is you want to make sure that you go ahead and wipe down all of your surfaces. So what I like to use is a little bit of carburetor cleaner on a rag, and then we'll go around and wipe all this off because we want all the oil off of it so that our gasket sealer makes a good seal when we go ahead and, and use that. So um, with that, we'll jump right in. But also, really quick, just a little comparison um, on our water pumps. This is a high output, high output, you know. <laughs> water pump but you can see the difference in the impeller it's got a flat plate it's i guess it's supposed to be more positive um, now you can pick these up from autozone they're an aluminum unit and i i figured it would look good with this engine for one but for two i'm going to try and take this engine on power tour and if you know anything about power tour it gets uh the it gets really hot and it's just uh, pretty pretty hard on old engines so um you really want your cooling system to be up to snuff and i've run this in my uh, several other engines for many many miles and had pretty good luck with these and I'll leave the part number for that below along with all the other part numbers for the parts and pieces that I use here today um, the other thing is you want to go ahead and get your front main seal and your timing cover installed and um, this is kind of the new seal they use which I don't really care for so you still can get the old seals and I got a video where I specifically go through and describe how to install that front main seal. I'm pretty particular about it and I didn't want to waste all your time here today in this video talking about it, but I do encourage you before you begin this process to check that out. All right, so just jumping in here, we're gonna take our timing cover gasket and um, if you can help it, it's really nice to have these little dowel pins in the front of your block because when you go ahead to put this timing cover gasket on against the block and then uh, mate it with your uh, timing cover, you know, it really helps to hold this guy in place so you don't get it all um, misaligned. But anyway, that's going to really help us today. We're going to go ahead and 
uh, lightly coat this with gasket sealer again you want to be careful around um, the ports themselves you know too much gasket sealer and it's squishing over um, into the port and that can break off go through your cooling system cause issues or it can just you know kind of squish over and then um, you know it, it really restricts your flow because it creates a smaller hole for the coolant to pass through so anyway I'm going to take a moment here and we're going to take our uh, gasket sealer and go around this gasket and just give it a nice coating on um, both sides just again just a very light coating but enough to give us a good tack and a good seal for any irregularities or anomalies in our timing cover or our block all right and i'm sure everyone's going to have a good time with this here but this is really how i do my timing cover gaskets with with gasket sealer i could probably stand to wear gloves but you know it is what it is but um basically what i do is coat one side and then just work it in and flip the gasket over and then get a coating on both sides um, again with the uh, timing cover gasket uh, a little bit is good but too much is is definitely not what you want so now we got it good and coated everywhere and um, not too much but enough that we're going to have a good tack and so we'll just slide it right on here and we'll see where these these dowel pins will really shine because it'll really help us to line it up good all right so now nothing special we're just going to take our timing cover here um, again we've already went ahead and installed our front main seal and the video is linked below and at the beginning of this video here of how to go ahead and do that so we'll just get this guy slid on again um, our dowel pins are really going to shine here allow us to line this bad boy up just perfect all right, so now um, we got the timing cover set on. We have two bolts right behind our water pump mating surface that go into the block. Now I'm just going to take our uh, mounting bolts here and just thread them in lightly enough to hold our intake against the gasket, but really not with any force. And I'll show you why here in a bit. Um, this is kind of an old, <laughs> uh, so, some old fella taught me this and. I don't know if it makes much difference or not, but these timing covers for Ford still with the dowel pins and everything have just a little bit of play. And um, what you can have issues with with this play is that um, you know it, it can affect your seal on your uh, on your front main seal on your harmonic balancer and it can cause a leak. So what he taught me to do is to keep everything loose and then at this point we're going to go ahead and install our harmonic balancer and that makes sure to go in and align our timing cover with our front main seal and make sure that that's all good now ironically today um, I have a box just off camera that's <laughs> our professional products kind of budget um, harmonic balancer that's a pretty good unit but when I open the box apparently I didn't have a harmonic balancer in it so today we're going to use an old one but uh, just to get everything aligned and then ironically I'll have to pull it back off after we get our intake all sealed but I'll leave the link to that harmonic balancer. It's a, it's a pretty darn good unit. And then also on the subject of Fords, you want to make sure that you have the right harmonic balancer for your engine. So this being a roller block after a certain date, it uses the 50 ounce imbalance uh, harmonic balancer setup where uh, the, the older stuff back in the flat tap of days, the 60s, they were set up for 28 ounce. And the 351 Windsor, they're all 28 ounce. So that's something you want to go ahead and check with your harmonic balancer so you don't get that off but anyway we're just going to go ahead and throw this on here i've went ahead and uh, lubed up our seal before i put our timing cover on and i've lubed up our uh, shaft on the end of our crank so let's see if we can find our keyway here there we go so then I'm going to put a piece of wood over here and just tap this on lightly and uh, then run it down with our crank. All right, so we're coming right in here to the center of our harmonic balancer. Just giving it a few taps until we can get to the point where we can get our crank bolt in, which looks like we're good with that. So we'll take that guy and just run it in a little ways. All right, crank bolt ran in there, 15 16 socket. We don't have to go crazy tight. Um, just wanted enough to align 
your timing cover and then you can address the torque on that at a later date but if you're doing the gasket sealer method like i like you are racing the clock because you have gasket sealer so you want to get it all torqued down before that sets up so now we can go ahead and move to our water pump and our water pump gasket and we're going to do the same thing that we did with our timing cover gasket but for the sake of time i'm just going to skip right to that uh, with uh, getting that gasket all nice and coated up all right there we are a nice coating of gasket sealer on our water pump backing plate again it's a pretty dirty deal but um i definitely believe it's it's worth all the effort to make sure you have a good seal so basically we're just going to go ahead and get this mounted up to our water pump and um, there's usually a couple of supplied bolts that come with these guys they are usually already mated but I do like to take them apart coat everything up and uh, again for your mock-up these two bolts down here that generally hold this guy together which I'll put it together and show you in a second uh, you want to make sure those do indeed clear your timing cover I've had that issue before where they do use a different head size on some of them and they'll contact your timing cover and it looks really close but when you go to put it together you'll have a nasty water leak all right got that bad boy all on there so it's prepped and now we're going to go ahead and take our water pump backing plate to timing cover gasket and get it doped up and all the same way with gasket sealer and then we'll go ahead and get this bad boy stuck on there and keep moving right along all right so this one's kind of a weird deal where uh, with this timing cover you'll notice there's this little opening at the bottom on this design and I guess before I get too far into this, I just want to mention that, you know, Ford had a pretty good time uh, with, with messing with all of us with all the different timing covers they made, a standard flow or reverse flow water pump. And again, it's, it's really one of those annoying things that, you know, just comes with doing a small block Ford. But um, basically, uh, because of the way that the uh, water pump mounts to the timing cover in this configuration with that backing plate, Really, the only place for coolant to contact is around these water ports. So um, I went ahead and put gasket sealer around these. And another good benefit to this gasket sealer deal is it really helps to just keep everything good and aligned when you're going to um, install everything. As you can see here with our stud and our gasket sealer, she's holding right in place, and our water pump can go right on without, you know, uh, running our our bolts through and catching some of our gasket and ripping it apart. All right, so coming in here with our water pump, this nice stud helps us pull everything in nice and aligned. And we're just going to use some of our, our top bolts because the first thing our gas is going to try and do is, is sag down on us. So these are usually the most difficult ones to get in if you have any issues. All right, so got our water pump on, our timing cover on, everything's still... A little on the loose side our timing cover is nice and aligned with our uh, harmonic balance here at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and get our timing cover bolts in and then get those just snugged and then um, then we'll get our water pump bolts in and then we'll just snug all those down too and then we'll go through and just tighten everything down nice and even uh, so we don't have any weird um, warp go on or anything of that nature and I do like to use, um, obviously, washers and then lock washers on these guys because, you know, there is a torque spec to everything, but uh, I just feel a lot better in this case. Now, if you're really particular as you're running uh, these bolts into aluminum, um, once you get everything nice and torqued down, uh, you can go back through and take one out at a time and put a little bit of coating of anti-seize on them. You know, with going into that aluminum, you don't really want it to corrode and destroy your timing cover and you can save yourself a lot of trouble if you go through and do that now um, for the sake of time and since we're racing our gasket sealer and I'm talking into the camera here which takes a little bit of extra time um, I opted to go ahead and get everything tightened down let our gasket sealer set up and then I'll go back and readdress this um, but normally I mean you could do it in the middle of the process whatever you want to do but uh, that's that's just a suggestion when you're putting your your bolts into an aluminum piece it just you can promote a lot of corrosion that can destroy stuff so anti-seize is your friend in this case <laughs>
So that pretty much does it for our timing cover and water pump installation. Um, you know, really I've seen this to be the most effective way to do it where when everything is installed and we go to fire off the vehicle, there's no issues, no leaks. You know, just something to keep in mind is you're bolting down into aluminum. You don't want to get crazy torquing these down or something like that. You can pull threads really easy on this stuff. Um, you know, and that's just something you really want to avoid. I like using lock washers instead of torquing everything. You can see as we went through the process, there's a lot of these that you can't get to very easily with a torque wrench where it's easier to use just uh, your regular old combination wrench to get to them. So those lock washers do help out quite a bit. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. A lot of guys talk about these water uh, ports where some of these bolts go into the the cooling system so it really wouldn't hurt to put some gasket sealer and I sees on those so they don't rust in place the biggest thing with with these old small block Ford engines when you take them out of something is that when you go to or if you're just trying to service your water pump a lot of times those like to snap off so um, this is a vehicle that you use a lot or whatever you know it's really just good practice to put something on there that's pretty much it for our water pump and timing cover install. We're gonna keep cooking through this engine. Um, some fun stuff with this Mabco deal. It was decked a ton, so we have to make some intake modifications to make that guy line up right, you know, no surprise there. We knew we were getting into with that. But um, if you wanna check out some of the other tech videos, I'll drop a link um, how to, you know, degree your camshaft. We go through a lot of good tech on this page, and you know, if that's, if you're into doing things the right way, um, you know, I try my best to do things um, as right as, as I know how to do them, and I try and uh, give that information on to you as well. So anyway, that's it for today. We'll catch you guys later.